Hello and welcome one more time. My name is Alex Centeno with Mercados. And in this very quick tutorial, we're going to be revisiting a technique that uh, we had shared many years ago uh, of separating Chroma and Luma in DaVinci Resolve. Why would we be doing this again if we already did in the past? Well, in the past, we didn't do it in a color managed workflow. And so many people have asked um, how to do it because obviously the technique that we uh, visited in that tutorial didn't work for uh, any color managed workflow. And so we're gonna do it in this one. If you're excited, I'm excited. Let's take a look. All right, I am here in DaVinci Resolve and I have a loaded a clip on my timeline and I am in the color page. And from here, I'm just gonna add a layer mixer node, Command L on a Mac. And the top one, we're gonna call this one luminosity and I am going to take the saturation to zero. And, uh, and then the second one is going to be our chroma. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to remove the luminosity from this node. But I'm gonna show you, before I do, I'm gonna show you some of my settings here on my project. So, I am going to be using a color manage color science and also the color processing mode is going to continue to be SDR, but the color output space is going to be HDR PQ. This could be also HLG, it could be SDR 2020, or it could be SDR Reg 709. Uh, obviously, um, SDR 709, Reg 709 is going to be a lot easier. Uh, so let's do it with the more difficult one, which is HDRPQ. And uh, just note that the processing color mode is going to be SDR. I have enabled HDR 10 plus, but uh, this is not uh, relevant for the tutorial. So here I am going to remove the luminosity from this node. Now, the important thing of that is that if I was to do it in the way that we did in the initial tutorial, and you can take a look at that tutorial if you want, um, and I'll put it in the description for you, but if we were to do it changing this to HSL, so in color mode, color space, and changing it to HSL from here, and then reducing the L channel, uh, it wouldn't work. And so I'll let you try it if you want, but for the sake of brevity here, what I'm going to do is the way that it works. So I am going to set to my primary and go to the color bars. And then from here, I'm going to reduce my gamma all the way to minus one. And also my gain, I'm going to reduce it to 0.1. So you can see that this node now has absolutely only color information. And we're gonna change the color mixer node to add. And there you have it. Now we have exactly the same, but this time we have the luminosity and the uh, chroma separate in different uh, nodes. Now, some people are asking, why would you go through all this trouble to separate Luma and Chroma when, uh, for example, the noise reduction techniques inside of DaVinci Resolve Studio already account for a reduction of uh, noise in luminosity uh, separate from the chromaticity? And so... Uh, the answer is because not necessarily everything is related to noise reduction. So let me show you what I mean here. So this particular shot is shot 
at uh, almost nighttime. So it's a sunset and it's very dark in certain areas. And the camera that I'm using here is the GH5, which is using a color profile chroma subsampling of 422. What that means is that it is sampling fully the luminosity, but it's only sampling half of the chromaticity. And so by doing that combination, then is going to introduce a lot more noise inside of the color signal than it does with the luminosity signal. And we almost always know this uh, to be the case. And that's why software like DaVinci Resolve actually uh, separate the noise reduction techniques into luminosity and uh, chromaticity so that you can um, affect them separately and in that more aggressively towards the color noise because it's going to be not only um i would say it's not as attractive as the luminoise uh, but at the same time it's also more prevalent and so you have to be more aggressive but what if we could find a technique that doesn't require us to do noise reduction or not as aggressive noise reduction instead of just blurring the information? So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to create a node. I'm going to call this blur. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the blur sharpen blur and I'm going to add a couple of points of blur maybe three points or so, 250.53. And if I was to play this, what you would notice, and I hope that this can be seen in the actual recording, is that of course you're going to lose a little bit of color detail, which of course the camera was doing already because it was subsampling half of the information. Uh, but, it actually retains, of course, because we did all this work to separate them, it actually retains all the luminosity signal. And so I can go here and add sharpening. So let's add a couple of points, maybe 49, maybe 49, just one point. And if you can see this, is extremely, extremely sharp. Now, because of the time of day in this particular clip, in this area right here, um, right next to the clouds, there is some kind of pattern macro blocking going on. And this is a beautiful shot otherwise, but I happen to have macro blocking here. And even though it might not be very noticeable, if I actually want to use this shot and find it like appealing and feel like I'm proud of the shot, then I would prefer for it not to have some macro blocking there, especially if this is an HDR clip. So it should be beautiful. It should be to the extent of uh, the HDR display. So by blurring it, by blurring the chroma channels, it actually is removing completely that effect of macro blocking that is happening here. And instead, it's actually adding sharpness where it's needed, which is in the Luma channels. So let me go ahead and show you before. And before and after and obviously I can do way more aggressive things like adding color boost to uh, only the chroma information or saturation or whatever it is that I want. Um, of course, that's beyond the scope of the tutorial today, but anyways. 
I hope that this has been a beneficial tutorial for you. If you know someone that could benefit from this information, please make sure to share this video with them. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't so far, because that obviously helps the channel uh, be more prominent and it helps more people get information like this. So thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Take care. Bye. Doing this. What would be doing this? Why would be? Why would be? Why would we be doing this? Why would be?